So 300 fish going in here. Today we're here in Fort Kent along the Fish River to see some actual stocking of brook trout into the Fish River. The trout come from a patchery in Frenchville owned by Mr. Gary Picard. Now Gary, how many, uh, you, you've got a hatchery in Frenchville, is this a private hatchery or is it a state funded hatchery? It's a private hatchery. We do mostly private work, but occasionally we have contracts with the state of Maine for, for fish. What do, you, what do you raise at the hatchery? Uh, brook trout and rainbow trout. Brook trout and rainbow trout? Yeah. Now, do they, do you, how do you get the, the fish originally? I mean, do, do you take some brooding stock or do well, you... We, uh, don't, we don't carry any more brood now. We buy all our eggs in from the state hatcheries. So these are actually their, were their fish at one time. So today we're with the, the Department of, of Inland Fisheries. And they're, uh, so they actually have the brood stock, you get their eggs yes. and then you, you raise them. Yes. From an egg to what size do you, do you raise them to? Well, normally we, we do all the recreational stocking for private ponds and we do some wholesale to other hatcheries. And that average is six to eight inches. Six to eight. And these fish here are about three quarter pound average. So this is a bit about the largest fish we ever put out. Now, did you get those eggs this spring? Last year. Yeah, a year. So they're, so they're a year old. They're a, they're a year and a half. A year and a half old. Almost two, actually. So we're going to see, I know you got your trailer and you got your tanks. Are the tanks specially built? They're uh, insulated hauling tanks. And uh, we put pure oxygen into the, into the water to keep the fish up. Uh, so you just put the oxygen inside the, inside the water as well? Yeah. And uh, how long can you keep them alive in there? If, if they're well fasted, if they're off the feet for a few days, you can travel all day without any issues, as long as the water temperature stays cool. Now you mentioned something about eating, and it's something I never, I never expected. Um, do you, do you feed the fish? I mean, we get, we get car sick. You know, we're humans. We get car sick. Do the fish get car sick? I oh, mean, because wow. you're moving them pretty hard. They don't, they don't like to be, uh, they don't travel well on a full gut, so we, we starve them for a few days. A few days before. And so they're, they're clean and they're purged. And if, if, if you don't do that, otherwise they crap all over the tank and the water gets really nasty okay. and then they, get, they can get ill and, and then they don't transfer well into the ponds or into the rivers. Very good. I know the, the people from the Inland, uh, the inland uh, Fisheries Department are here and they're anxious to start. Yeah, they, they want to talk too. So yeah, don't talk. worry. I'm going to get them in the act here. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get, we'll get the process going and we'll get them later. The trout have nice spawning colors on right now. So if you want to get your camera up close. Oh. Those are large trout. Those are huge. Now, how many do you have in your tank, roughly? There's uh, 300 here. 300. Going into this drop. So now you're putting them, they're being put in buckets right now, and then the buckets are being carried down to the river? Correct. Now, the state trucks, when they have, they're, they're equipped to, uh, with a sluice pipe. You know, if they can get close enough, they can connect the pipe. And they lift the gate and the fish are just... The water goes right to the, right to the, right to the river. So you're right, this is fall, so they're, they're in their full spawning colors. Almost. Yeah. I can take two of them. Easier with two. Easier with two. Balances. Now the buckets go down to the river. So, oh my goodness, yes. And there they go. Into the fish river. Now these, how far, do you know how far will they travel from here? As far as they, they want They'll to. keep yep. on going. Every fish is different. Some will stay right here in this pool and some may drop down river or, or go upstream. Yeah. Wow. 
Very, very good. Now, if you look carefully, you can actually some, see some of the trout that have just been stocked. They'll stay here. Right now, they're probably getting adjusted to the water temperature. Adjust the... Wow. So, 300 fish going in here. What do we have total? Uh, fish? Yeah, today. Total? I don't know. So, we got 2,400 okay. yellings to move. Okay. Here are more fish. The buckets are really just used to transport the fish from the truck down to the river. Since the buckets are full, they wouldn't last too long in this kind of environment. And so we were trying to show them different places and show them, I wanted to take them to Soldier Pond and how good of a trout fishery that was. And they didn't want to film, oh, there's houses in the background, you can hear vehicles and stuff. Well, here with me is somebody from the inland the Department of Inland Fisheries. And your name is? Jeremiah Wood. Jeremiah, you you work for the the, uh, the Department of Inland Fisheries. I do, I'm a fisheries biologist for the a, department. A fisheries biologist for, for the, is it for the northern part of Maine? Or? Yes, we are based out of Ashland and we basically work from Holton North throughout northern Maine. So this is, uh, this is the fall season. We've seen some of the color in the trees. Um, is this part of a special program or do you normally stock fish at this time of the year? This is actually the first time we're stocking brook trout into the Lower Fish River. This is a relatively new program and the, a little bit of background is the, the fishery here, as most people who fish the Lower River would know, has changed a lot with muskies and smallmouth bass getting into the river. So that has uh, introduced a new sport fishery here, but it's also diminished the trout and salmon fishing. So the trout, the, the muskies and bass compete with the trout? Yes, and primarily what, what we're seeing here is the, the muskies and bass are feeding on the smaller trout and salmon. Oh, so they feed on the smaller ones? Yes, so we don't have as many fish growing up to be larger catchable fish. So this program, we're stocking larger fish that have a less chance of being eaten and pr putting them in the river to provide a fishery. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is the only area in northern Maine where we've opened this lower stretch of river to year-round fishing. And that's because we've had a lot of demand from people who would like the opportunity to fish this time of year when the season closes but the weather is still nice and some very die-hard anglers that like to get out there and uh, do, some, do some fishing throughout the season. So starting October 1st, all the way through March, this is open to fishing. It's fishing with artificial lures only and catch and release. So this would, so this would include ice fishing as well? Um, it's, it's open water fishing. Okay. And there really aren't many places that freeze solid on the river here, right. so we would not recommend trying to venture out on the ice. Okay. Um, but like last year, we had a pretty mild winter, and the river stayed open pretty much all winter long. It did. Um, areas just below the falls, that usually stays open most of the year. Um, and stretch through here usually stays open. So there is opportunity for people. We, we know of a few uh, young individuals who have gone out here and uh, fished, fished it all winter for the last two winters. And they're, they're mainly fly fishing. You, you can also use lures. Um, and they're catching a lot of these big fish and, and really having a good time doing it. So now if somebody was on the ice and fishing, it, would, they, would it be possible? I'm just curiosity on that one. Uh, this uh, would, is not open to ice fishing. Okay. No, then that's, but, you're, but you're right. The last, the last winter it stayed open most of the... Uh, it was open, the Fish River, most yeah. of the winter. Now another interesting thing is uh, later on the hatchery guys are going to stock the St. John River down in Van Buren. And that's, the St. John is now open to ice fishing. So if you find good safe ice on the St. John anywhere through 
basically from St. Francis down to uh, the border. Uh, it is open to ice fishing and we're stocking these trout. They're, they're averaging uh, about 12 inches. There's some really nice fish to catch. So that's uh, another good opportunity for people to get out and take advantage of. This, I mean, it's great. Uh, for the fishermen, it's a great opportunity. Um, it provides, it provides uh, you're right, fishing opportunities for people. And we're really trying to spread the word because these fish are fairly expensive. So um, we've had, uh, there's been recent legislative activity that's provided funding for these fish. Um, but we'd like people to get out and take advantage of the fishery so that we can continue to do this on an annual basis. Now, when you talk about the, uh, the lower Fish River, which section of river are you, are you referring to? This section starts at the Fish River Falls. At Fish River Falls. And goes down to the St. John. The St. John in, in the town of Fort Kent. Correct. So it's about a six mile, five to six mile stretch of river. The rest of the river is closed to fishing after September 30th. And so, so today we're putting, you're putting some 300 trout here? Here, and there are two other sites further up, further up uh, the, river. the river. So you're not putting all the fish in one site? No, we're spreading them out. Along the, the six mile stretch Correct. of river? Yep. And there will be, uh, we'll be stocking 1,100 total. It's a lot of fish. It is. A lot of nice fish too. I mean, what we've <laughs> seen so far, they're gorgeous. And, you know, actually, as we're talking, the fish are jumping right behind you. I mean, yes. They're, they're I, here. I will probably be back here tomorrow fishing myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, during this uh, year-round um, fishing opportunity, what are the fishing regulations for this, specifically this stretch of water right here? Okay, so it is artificial lures only. Yep. So you can use lures uh, or you can use flies. You can fly fish. Okay. Um, and for trout and salmon, it's catch and release. So all fish that you catch have to be released. So really, so somebody who's out here tomorrow and would catch a fish, you, you, they'd have to throw it back. Correct. However, if they catch a muskie or a bass, they can keep that. They can keep that particular one. Yes. Now, what about when open water season starts in April 1st? then the open water regulations will apply. Okay. So when open water season starts, it will, re it will be open to worms and people can keep fish based on what their daily bag limit is um, for the open water season. Now, now that you've stocked the fish here, what is your, how are you gonna use this information or how are you gonna capture the information from these released fish so that you can see, or at least monitor the fish over time? We are trying to make contact with as many people as possible, ask people uh, who we think might be fishing it. We've encouraged people to fish and to uh, let us know what they catch. And uh, we hope that uh, we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time fishing it ourselves and, and monitoring it, spreading the word and, and getting whatever feedback we can from people. So this is a, so the goal here, is it to have these trout reproduce at some point or is it just, they're put here for the anglers to use. They're put here for the anglers to use. Yep. This is to create a fishery, hope to enhance a fishery that we know has been degraded over the, the past uh, couple of decades. Well, this is, this is great. Um, I mean, I look, there are fish all around us. I'm looking down in the water. I can actually see them in the river. Um, I'm almost tempted to go back home now, but I, I think we'll <laughs> probably go to the other sites as well. Thank you, Jeremiah. This is great. And it's Thank it's you. nice to see the efforts that the Department of Inland Fisheries is doing. You know, especially in this section of the river that, you're right, the trout fishery has diminished because of the competing species of muskies and bass. Um, it's nice to see the you know, efforts being put into the stretch of river. And over time, hopefully it'll come back or, or at least balance itself off. And if anyone has any questions, they can contact us at the Ashland office. Um, the, the phone number is 435-3231. And let us know if you're out here trying out this fishery and catching fish, we'd love to hear from you. That's, that's good. That's good to encourage people to just call. I mean, there's no, yeah. uh, it's a call to Ashland and, and I'm sure you're looking for these reports we, that you, you know, you can use them uh, and, and get more information from them. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. Thank you. And now we're at our second site, and this is the tank. 
that we saw earlier. And you can see the trout are very, very good sized. These again, there are 400 trout that are being stocked at this second site on the Fish River between Fish River Falls and Fort Kent. The buckets are filled with enough water just to get them down to the river. It's about a 150 foot hike down to the river. And you can see some very, very nice fish. So Gary, you've got 400 in this tank? Yes. And the other drop is that last tank. That last one. Yeah. This is the second site on the river. This is where on the Fish River, which is extremely low for this time of the year. We haven't seen rain for a couple of months and the rivers are starting to show. Now the fishery, the fish are being brought by bucket down to the river and the buckets are just emptied into the fish river. These fish will migrate up and down river and will provide a sport fishery for the people in the area. These are all native brook trout that were raised in Frenchville but the eggs had come from the hatchery in Enfield. Now, Jeremiah, have I ever seen the water this low? Uh, boy, in the same uh, well. when you when you're stocking for fall stocking. This is this is as low as it's been in several years, at least. Oh, could I see one as well? Yeah. You yeah. see that? Oh my goodness! They are. Oh, oh. They're lively. They're lively. This is good. They're in good, healthy form. Yeah. Oh, it's in the river. Let me show you this one, Don. Let me show. Let me see. Wow! Look at this. I mean, we're talking about 12, 13-inch fish that are being emptied into the river. 400 are being dropped off at this site. This will provide good angling opportunities for fishermen here in the St. John Valley and outside as well. Yeah, being from further south, we don't see it this time of year. So this is, compared to our rivers right now, this is actually decent flow. Really? Uh, it's, it's, you know, slightly worse in central Maine, and a lot worse in southern Maine just really had no rainfall so to us this is actually pretty pretty good flow compared to what we've been stocking now you're this from where you're I'm the uh, fish culture supervisor of the infield state fish hatchery about three hours south it's uh, around the bangor area yeah it's probably half an hour 40 minutes north of bangor now how many how many hatcheries does the state of maine have uh, we have eight facilities total six hatcheries and two rearing stations now what's the difference between a hatchery and a rearing station? So the hatchery basically has brood stock to hatch eggs and we have a hatchery, an actual hatchery building, a facility to house the eggs and the fry over the winter. The rearing stations would receive fry very early on in the spring from the hatcheries to supply them for... And, for they, the and then they the raise them to a certain size? They do, yeah. We have three different you know, size groups that we commonly raise them to. Fall fingerling, they're about six or seven months old. They're about seven inches long. Then we keep some over till the spring. Those are spring yearlings. Those would be around 10 inches long. And then the oldest fish we keep for stocking uh, would be fall yearlings, about a year and a half, which is the same as these here. Typically run about a pound a piece and 13 inches long. So is there a capacity, a, a capacity that a hatchery can, can rear in this case? Absolutely. They're all set up differently. Some have round tanks, some have concrete raceways, some have gravel pools. Um, and the densities vary at each facility, but yes, there is kind of a magic number for healthy production Do without we... sacrificing, uh, you know, the health and, and look of the fish. 
Now, do you look at, like, I know the Frenchville, the Picard uh, hatchery in Frenchville is a privately owned. Um, do you look to other hatcheries as well at other private places to raise fish? Uh, we generally don't. I believe in this case there was a legislative bill um, providing money to raise more fish to be stocked around the state. And since the state facilities were at capacity, we had to look elsewhere to, to find those to raise. Fish. Be, uh, because I'm assuming that all the hatcheries, there's a lot of uh, cleanliness uh, that goes along with with raising fish. Absolutely. And uh, and so I'm assuming that like the hatchery in Frenchville has to go through some kind of real pretty rigid inspection to make sure that they meet the standards, at least for the state of Maine. I would guess so. You'd have to talk to Gary <laughs> more on that. But <laughs> I know the state facilities um, have inspections all the time. All the time. Uh, yeah, there's fish quality inspections and fish health inspections. Uh, twice a year, so pretty much before every stocking season, the fish are, uh, I guess, deemed safe and healthy to be right. to be stocked around the state. I'm guessing Gary probably has some of the same requirements to be able to put fish in state waters. Do you? Um, what other fish? I mean, these are brook trout. What other fish do the hatcheries, you know, did, did you raise? Sure. Uh, in Enfield, it's landlocked salmon and brook trout, but we're about 90% brook trout. That's the primary fish in our facility. Uh, some of the other hatcheries raise lake trout, uh, brown trout, rainbow trout, and squake. And there's actually multiple strains of each species, so they have to be segregated among strains. So it's, there's really a lot to it. Now, uh, are all the eggs reared in like the end field? I mean, do you get the, the, the lake trout eggs as well as the landlocked uh, um, salmon eggs? and raise them, or at least get them there and get them to fry stage. We have domestic brood stock that, gen that we generate on station from the brood we already carry. So we'll take a future brood lot of eggs from those brood that keeps the cycle going. But for the wild strains, we actually have to go into the field and take eggs every year from wild fish. So it really varies depending on the species and the strain as to, right. as to how we keep those fish. And your name is? Jared Jort. Jordan? Jort, H-J-O-R-T. H J O R T. Well, it was good. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the. At least this. This is an adventure. At least for us, I'm sure it's not all like this all the time. No, this is great though. I mean, we've got great weather this fall. It's a nice day to be doing this, and yeah, we get to go out for a drive and stock some beautiful fish. So. And a three-hour drive to just to put some fish in the river. But certainly, but that's okay. But certainly, uh, it's giving the uh, the fishermen an opportunity Absolutely. here that that you're creating something that had almost been lost, you know, because of the other invasive species that we have in the river. And you're certainly making some good efforts to uh, bring you those, those stocks back. Yeah, we were doing our best. I think the biologists have really created a good, good program here. Uh, it's fairly new, but I think uh, anglers are already starting to, to enjoy it and see some success. And I think the more the word spreads that these fish are here, I think you'll see, see more people fishing for them. Well, certainly, I mean, to put, uh, I think there's going to be uh, like uh, 1,100 fish being put between the Fort Kent, uh, Fisher River Falls and the town of Fort Kent. Um, it certainly provides some, some good fishing for some, some real anglers. You yeah, know, the real hardcore guys like to be out in the fall. <laughs> in the fall of the year. Yeah, you got a few weeks to a month of, you know, comfortable fishing. Yes. There's a handful of guys that will actually fish right through the winter in these stretches that stay open. So, and they've got now brook trout and landlocked salmon. We stocked 650 landlocked salmon last week into this stretch of river, so. Really, in this stretch in here? This same stretch, yep. Two out of the three sites we're stocking today got landlocked salmon last week, and it was 13 inches. That's plenty of opportunity. Plenty of opportunity. And uh, certainly, uh, with uh, the warmer climates that we seem to be experiencing in the winter, we're not seeing as much ice on the river too, so it really affords the anglers opportunities for fishing year-round. It sure does. And it's uh, nice to see that the, that the state, the Department of Inland Fisheries, has responded to that that call, I guess, from, from the public. We aim to please. We aim to please. Thank <laughs> you very much. Hey, no it was problem. enjoyable. Anytime. The river between Fish River Falls and the town of Fort Kent. Site number two, 400 brook trout have just been released into the stretch of river. One more site to drop off another 400 fish. I 
Now, Gary, I mean, we're, right now we're stocking here in the Fort Kent area. Do you stock? Do you stock other places in Maine or in the in the valley? Uh, the well, county? we do a lot of uh, recreational so private pond stocking. And so people who have private ponds statewide, uh, we we take their orders and we deliver. So some of the ways that we, since Maine is such a large state, one of the ways that we do that is through. Uh, a distribution system like with soil conservation yeah. districts put on trout sales every year and we're the supplier of those trout sales and on a designated day in the month of May we'll go to each county district and we'll bag trout for whoever has a pond who wants to put some in their pond we just have these special bags so we put water and uh, oxygen and we put fish in there and tie it off and they can grab their bags and bring them and so and we also do uh, direct drops into ponds and then we have other hatcheries that buy fish from us as well. We ship a lot of fish out of state to, uh, to other hatcheries. To other hatcheries, yeah. So our markets are here in Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, uh, sometimes in New York, uh, Vermont, and as far away as Pennsylvania. What's the, what's the most demand for which species of fish? Do, do, or do they, because you 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 raise rainbow trout and brook trout. Well, we're primarily rainbow trout and... Uh, Rainbow trout are very hard fish to culture. They require very clean and cold water. Okay. And so the further south you go, the harder they become, the harder it is to grow them in, in a hatchery system. So, um, and, and it's one of the reasons why we're able to ship brook trout so far south is because a lot of other places uh, have a hard time growing them, but people want them in their ponds anyway. Yeah. So um, uh, we fill that, that need. So if somebody has a private pond and they're in southern part of the state, mm -hmm. They can contact the soil conservation district yeah, they in can their contact, area? What, if they contact us, we'll usually try to refer them to the soil conservation district. Okay. And it's, stocking is a once a year thing, and it's usually in the spring. And so uh, we try to coordinate everything as much as we can, because logistically we can't, you know, stock every single pond individually. Right. <laughs> there's just not enough time in the day, and there's not enough days in the week, and uh, there's not enough stocking days in the year to be able to do that. So. Uh, we, we depend heavily on on our vendors, our soil conservation districts. Is there is there a telephone number where people can reach you? Yeah, we're on the phone book, Mountain Springs Trout Farm. And it's it's called Mountain Springs Trout Farm yep. in Frenchville, Maine. Yep. And if you go on the uh, the Inland Fisheries and Web uh, Wildlife website, uh, there's a, a list of approved hatcheries um, that are licensed with IFNW, and our names are our contact numbers are there as well. Well, that, this is great. Um, I mean, it's certainly a good service to all the people in the state, mm. and not just the private uh, pond owners, but certainly as we've seen today, mm. as we're seeing today, um, the fishermen right here in the St. John Valley will, are benefiting from fish that you've raised, yeah, that you raised. This is the first time we put brook trout here in, in the Fish River, so it's uh, something new, and hopefully it catches on. And, yes. Yeah. It is. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. They're pretty relaxed. And you can see they're just kind of hanging out. Look the, uh, the ceramic diffusers. Now we're here at our third oh, site, you the last site on the Fish River. How the one foot, roughly. Getting the buckets ready to carry them down to the river. Yeah. This is a two-footer. I like the bigger ones just because you don't have to use the leaders for a minute. The more yeah. surface area, the better. Here we'll be putting in 400 brook trout. That'll be stocked for the people to enjoy. Yeah. So efficient. The fish do really well with it. So. Would you put more than 400 in there? Or is that about right? You could put quite a few more. For, for, for a shorter trout. Yeah. Yes. So now we put a little water in the bucket, and now we're dipping the fish. That's good. Don, it's, you're going to go ice fishing this winter, and you're going to... And think of this. One fish per day, and you're going to say, what the hell is going on? I'm used to seeing... Yeah, hundreds of fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be the same for you. No, it will. So I, I, don't, I don't do it, much fishing anymore, because... And here we are on the third site where fish are being released.
The biologists are currently bringing the fish down in buckets down to the site where they're going to be released. In this six mile stretch between Fish River Falls and the town of Fort Kent. Anglers will be able to start fishing for these fish tomorrow. With special regulations of artificial lures only. And more fish coming in. And there they go. As you've seen, these fish average 12 inches in length. Very nice, healthy fish. Most of these fish are put here just so that fishermen can actually fish. With the special regulations that are here in this six mile stretch between the Fish River and Fort Kent, it's open year round to fishing, but all the fish have to be released except during open water season. As you can see, some of the fish are already starting to move outside of the drop area. And we can see some of the fish jumping out there. It doesn't take too long, they'll spread out the entire length of the river. So this must be the last load coming down? This is the last. The last. How long will the fish take to acclimate to the water? These water temps are quite similar, really. They're probably in the upper 50s, so. Upper 50s, so yeah, they, they. I mean, minutes. I mean, they'll probably be biting in a couple hours if somebody were to fish for them. Really? Yep. Because I notice a lot of the fish, once you once you put them down, they kind of lay on the bottom for a while, kind of. Uh, you assume that they're getting their bearings, or they're really. Uh, That's their exactly bodies. what they're doing. They're they're just adjusting to the new environment. And when fish go to the bottom, that's actually a good thing. If they were up near the top constantly, that's, that shows they're a little more stressed. You'll see every once in a while a fish will rise out in the distance. That could just be adjusting to the different oxygen levels, adjusting its air bladder from transport. But for the most part, these fish are either spreading out or hanging out on bottom. And that's a very good thing. You know, they are. We're starting to see some of the fish and, and they're probably, some of them are out 50, 60 feet and they've just been dropped here a few minutes. I've, it won't take too long for them to be uh, start moving up and down the river. Yeah, I think they're they're ready to go. They're either going to be looking looking for food or looking for a, for a new home to settle into. And I think, like I said, that by this evening they'll certainly be ready to start now, feeding. Will the fish start looking for specific pools as opposed to, or do they just do they just keep on traveling? They seem to settle into a place that they like, and I think. Every fish is different. Um, some of them will stay in the riffles and runs, others will stay in the pools, but they'll they'll spread out until they find a, a place they like. Well, they're probably like uh, somewhat like humans. Once you find a good, comfortable spot That's that provides spot. you food, shelter, and safety, you stay there. Do you have other, are there other stocking sites I mean, coming up here for you, for, for the department? We could have done some more, but to save time, just because if something happened to the trucks, we decided to come up with the fleet truck and do just this today. Uh, but are you done for the year? No, <laughs> we're, almost, we're almost halfway done. Halfway done for the, uh, so, so you, most of it is going to be in the southern part of the state where Depending on what we're doing or what kind of fish it is, we go it's all over the place. All over. For example, we're up here in Fort Kent. We've gone down south before, but a lot of it's around Enfield where we are, but it can vary. Around the area. So tomorrow is going to be stocking somewhere else, or do you okay. recuperate from this trip? Stocking every day. Stocking every day. Yep. Very. Uh, how do you set up the schedule? That's a question for 
Yeah, yeah you get up in the morning and you look at the list. We're stocking so with so many fish in this particular area. And off you go. He figures it out. I come in. We get the stocking cards and we load up and head out. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed your stay up here. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Thank you. On behalf of all fishermen, thank you goes out to the Department of Inland Fisheries in Ashland for creating a new fishery in the St. John Valley for everyone to enjoy. The six mile stretch of rivers starting at Fisherer Falls to the St. John River in Fort Kent has just been stocked with 1,100 12 to 14 inch brook trout. Starting on October 1st until March 31st, 2017, fishing is allowed in the Lower Fish River. Fishing is done by that official lures only, and all trout and salmon must be released. To all the fishing enthusiasts, don't put away your fishing rods, but rather come to the Lower Fish River and continue to enjoy the great sport of fishing.